We are going to, again, talk to about veterans. We're talking with a veteran and with a actor, writer, film uh, film director, Max Martini. We'll have that in a few minutes. Leanne Tweed and Dr. Drew. This has been Day Live on Talk Radio 790 KBC. Mm-hmm. It is our distinct privilege now to welcome Tom Spooner, former Special Forces Green Beret, Warriors Heart Foundation founder. We've also got Max Martini, director, writer, and actor for... Sergeant Will Gardner, are we getting that right? Leanne, I'm happy to introduce your friend, Max. Uh, yeah, Max Martini, who actually has been on my podcast years ago. So actually the first time we've met in person, but we, we have a lot of friends in common, and uh, Dana Commandator and Michael Broderick. And, you know, I saw this, obviously, with our friends in common, I saw this, um, the trailer, when it first came out, and I just said, oh, my God, this is amazing, and it has our friend Gary Sinise in it. Um, you tell our audience um, what the movie is about and why you made this film. Well, it's it's about a uh, a soldier that comes back from combat uh, and uh, experiencing minor TBI, uh, PTS. He's displaced when we meet him, and and it's it's really uh, a story about his journey, his healing, mm-hmm. let's say, and and I think that's what differentiates our film from other films about PTS. So, so you follow this main character, and, and you see that, uh, you know, even though he's suffering from these conditions, and even though, uh, you know, he's at a very low point in his life, uh, he's capable of employment, he's capable of, of being a, a father, he's capable of being a loving husband and companion, and, 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 and I think the point of the film is to inspire uh, soldiers uh, that, are, that are experiencing difficulties to come forward and ask for help, that it's out there. Uh, if they're having difficulty navigating the VA system, there is an option, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, and as a result of, of the healing, uh, they too can be, uh, uh, you know, help other veterans that are experiencing right. the same thing. Yeah, you wrote this film. Is is Sergeant uh, Will Garner, is he a, a true character? Or did you take this from, from other people maybe you've met? Or did you take, get it from Tom? I mean, how did, how did you write this story? Yeah, I was, I was doing a, a TV series called The Unit uh, oh, a while yeah. back. And it ran for about four years. Mm-hmm. Um, and during that time, I went to the Middle East twice. And, uh, and I met a, an Army Ranger over there. And so he, while he was in combat, we stayed in communication. And, uh, and while he was uh, overseas, he, you know, suddenly came out and, you know, told me he was having uh, just experiencing some things that were symptomatic of traumatic brain injury. And uh, and then when he came home, had a very difficult time reintegrating. So he, it, our communication inspired me to write this movie. Uh, it's not based on his his uh, his experiences per se, but but he really uh, was the the cat- catalyst, you know. And Tom, your involvement. Yeah, I'm no involvement in the movie other than being friends with Max. Um, but with Warriors Heart Foundation, you know, and that's just like Max was saying, how it brings that awareness to some of the struggles not all of our veterans go through, but a large majority. I mean, with right. the veteran suicide rate of 20 a day, obviously there's a problem. Yeah. And so it's not just awareness of the invisible wounds that we talk about. That's kind of makes them visible in the movie. You know, it, uh, it also makes us aware of the solutions that we now have for it. So it's not just this doom and gloom story, kind of good luck. You know, it's like, hey, awareness about the problems, what they look like, but then also like what we bring to the table, and that's the solution aspect of it, and the healing. Solution being, how do you, would you say solution, what are you thinking? Whenever I say solution, yeah. it's, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the majority of them, str- uh, veterans struggle with PTS, mild TBI, and a lot of them with chemical dependencies. Yeah. Too. So in that solution that we found through my own experience and many others is that, you know, you have to treat all three things and you have to treat them by in order of which will kill them first, you know, which is the chemical dependency piece then the TBI and PTS, you know, and that's what we do. And then at the foundation, we help subsidize that treatment cost because uh, our veterans aren't taken care of the way that they should be taken care of. So we're filling in the gap with that. A uh, lot of the issues that uh, I'm contending with in t- dealing with veterans is they, there's a resistance to coming to care. Uh, and because I'm not a veteran, I don't have that kind of connectivity mm-hmm. that you would have. Are you, are you the, the warm handshake, as they say, that gets them in? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and they're at Warriors Heart. I mean, that population is veterans, active duty, and first responders only. So it's that same culture, that same population. So you you get that peer-to-peer network, and you get that uh, kind of helps break the ice, which you have struggle breaking through I would met with guys like it's just, me. It's just, yeah, it's just the warm handshake. You know, <laughs> we, we, we do it with drug addicts. 
you know, we know how to do that with recovering people, mm -hmm. but veterans have a special need for somebody that, and I bet you got into the two max is the intensity of those relationships in combat are almost, you can't find it in their, in their right. civil, civilian life. Yeah. And they feel disconnected and injured and on drugs right. or whatever. And so it's really a, quite a challenge. Yeah. I, you know, I, I was with, uh, Tom's brother, Scott recently and, and, uh, he has a podcast that, that I did, and, uh, you know, he was saying, which I think is, is, is just spot on, is that, we, you know, we invest so much money in, uh, in turning someone into a soldier and, and sending them to specialty schools and, to, and, and really preparing them for, for combat. Right. And if we invested as much time and money into their exit strategy uh, as we do... You here, wouldn't have to. You wouldn't, right, you exactly. wouldn't have to spend that much time and money. Right. That's the thing, it's right. if you really targeted it properly. Because right. there's guys like, like Tom that want to help out. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's, it's a it's a peer-to-peer -peer kind of a thing. Absolutely. Yeah. We've got to take another little break here. Thank you, gentlemen. Again, where can they find out about the film if they want to go to a website or anything? Uh, the film's available on VOD and in theaters on the 11th and DVD and Blu-ray on the 19th. Is there a website dedicated to the film? Uh, they can follow my Instagram at Max Martini LA and Twitter is the same handle. Max Martini LA, go there. Foundation founder. We've got Max Martini, director, writer, actor for Sergeant Will Gardner. And tell us again when the film will be available. The film releases uh, January 11th in theaters and on VOD, and uh, the Blu-ray and DVD come out on the on February 19th. And we were just talking, too, off the air, that, that you're donating a lot of the proceeds to different charities. Can you tell us what those are? Yeah, there's there, there's three charities receiving 10% of the profits each. Uh, Tom's charity, Warrior's Heart, is mm -hmm. one of them. Uh, Higher Ground, which is a charity based out of Sun Valley, Idaho, and uh, the Gary Sinise Foundation. Amazing. Yeah. Friends of three ours. Three great yeah. organizations. Do, do good stuff. And then Tom was telling me he himself has been through a lot of the stuff that is chronicled in this film, and he, of course, now is being a, a peer right. model, peer support, peer... And, and tell us more about Founders Heart, wait, Warrior's Heart. Warrior's Heart, yeah. And, and, and I heard you talking something about stigma, too. Talk to us about that, because I think a lot of people who aren't veterans, I think they, they, try, they want to understand, and I think they just don't really quite grasp what it is that you guys come back into when you try to come back into the civilian world. Mm -hmm. We want to, and we want to embrace you, right. and it, they just don't really quite get it. Yeah, for me, it was, um, you know, not first I didn't know I had a brain injury. I just knew I was losing mm -hmm. my mind, mm -hmm. and uh, that was for sure. And, like, I would get lost, you know, driving home. I'd have to put stuff in the GPS. And I mean, do you I think was that was just because of your anxiety or depression or something? Or no, did that you was know what it was pure cognitive. But, well, but did you, th which, how did you explain it to yourself? Like, that uh, I'm losing my mind. Right. Okay. <laughs> You're that just on the crazy. side of the road going, yeah. damn, where, wait, yeah. where, where was I going? And the big problem with that is, and for me, it wasn't an ego perspective because I got sober back in 92, so I'm used to seeking and getting help and um and so it wasn't an ego thing but the mind melter for me was is that no i'm the guy that helps people like yeah. i went from jumping tall buildings in a single bound and you're a delta guy right yeah i mean you're the best of the best yeah so then how did i go from that um to now i am the one that needs help so it just didn't make sense and again you know in my struggles i ended up almost taking my own life and not because like they would be better off or the depressive aspects. It was I needed what was going on in between my ears to stop and all the tools that off. I had. Yeah, like my spiritual, the therapy, all that stuff wasn't working. And I know what bullets do to brains. So, I mean, it, and again, having traumatic brain injury, I was thinking, well, that's just a valid option. You well, know? What helped you? Uh, what helped me was another warrior that said, hey, man, you're all screwed up. One of my best friends, you know, and it's like, uh, and so I finally listened to him, got tested for TBI. And then lo and behold, I was operating at 50% processing speed, 50% verbal memory. Hmm. And that was a oh, game changer wow. for me because, I mean, you can fix injuries. You can't fix crazy, you know, and, uh, yeah. and so... What so do they do? Well, what we did, can. It's just a different kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's true. a different thing. What do they do for TBI? Um, at the time, I was on Fort Bragg, and I went to uh, the cognitive Carolina. therapy, vestibular therapy, psychological therapy. See, I even there, had to be there, on meds. There are disciplines in, in medicine and neuroscience now yeah. that sort of treat the brain the way you might think, of, say, of a skeletal muscle or, or a skin wound. There are ways of healing and growing sure. and the things they can do now that we didn't even understand existed four years ago, five years ago. Wow. And they're showing some really good results, and Tom's living proof. Yeah, and so that's why we do at Warrior's Heart what we do. You know, we get the chemical dependency stuff that's killing them first, you know, and then we address all the other aspects, the cognitive aspects and the psychological, and then some of it even with meds, you know, I mean, that had sure, to be appropriate at the time. And, um, and just get them back into functioning and reminding them 
of who they are, which are heroes and champions. You know, I mean, hey, you go through all that struggle at the lowest part. Um, Can I ask you a stupid question? Of course. Was it one of those, like, when when you started getting therapy, was it a, like, the veil was lifted or the cloud, the fog cleared kind of a moment when you started getting help? Or Yeah, absolutely. Was it slow? Was it a slow journey? No, I mean, it was a a little bit of a slow journey, but it had pivotal points in it, you know, where I had a real, you know, I mean, those kind of moments where there was a breakthrough in psychological, you know, in psychological therapy or whether it was something that I did in cognitive you know, or just other spiritual practices, you know, that I did. And the big thing is, is that, you know, that's why I share as much as I do about it. So, you know, it's like, hey, if, and this is not being arrogant, but it's like, hey, if a guy like me with all that kind of help, at my, if I was struggling, hey, it's okay for other guys, you know, seeking help it, and seeking assistance is strength. It's it, not weakness. It takes time. It's slow. It's a program of attraction and that warm handoff. We in medicine forget about that. We're talking to Tom Spooner, former special forces Green Beret, Warriors Heart Foundation founder. Is there a website for that? Yes, at uh, warriorsheart.com. Warriorsheart.com. And, of course, we have Max Martini, director, writer, actor for Sergeant Will Gardner. You can find that at your... Instagram and Twitter, Max Martini LA for both. Max Martini LA for both. And we'll be back in just a minute. Uh, it's Lauren, Leanne, Leanne Reed and Dr. Drew. This is Midday Live. So right now, we're joined by Tom Spooner, former Special Forces Green Beret. The brains behind Warrior Heart Foundation at warriorheart.com. Is that That's where they correct. should go? And, of course, we have Max Martini, who is director, writer, actor for Sergeant Will Gardner. Uh, you can find that at Max Martini LA on his Instagram. And uh, let's talk more about the film. Again, this is this is Tom's story sort of writ large by your character. Right? Where did you film it? We, we shot in Los Angeles, uh, New Mexico, Baltimore, and D.C., uh, yeah. So the, the the story takes place. It's a, it's a, it's a motorcycle trip across the country, essentially. Nice. And, and um, but you know, Tom was saying a few things about just you know one one of the the through lines in in this film is that it, it's not a show of weakness to ask for help. And that I think at the end of the movie, hopefully, people walk away with that. Like I think it's very important that. Uh, that they understand that because the the guy that I was talking about earlier that inspired this uh, me to write this film uh, while he was in combat he was petrified to ask for help I mean he uh, you know he was he was really uh, concerned with his well being and you know what was, was that so I mean a lot of people talk about the, the warriors don't want to ask for help I mean I think maybe this is hopefully in the past but I do too, they yeah. didn't want to lose their job. Yeah. They were right. afraid, and, and, and their job for a lot of these warriors is their identity. Mm-hmm. Like, if I say I might have a TBI or I might have PTSD, then they're going to take me off the combat lines and I might lose my job and have right. to be medically retired, and then what do I do, or right? Or send you to the rear, which is probably well, just it's even worse. the same, or yeah. even worse. Yeah. Right, <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah. So is yeah. that why he was petrified? I think so, yeah. And, you know, and even when he came up, when he came back to the United States, uh, you know, I was trying to help him get into uh, to one of these programs, and and uh, we didn't know each other at the time. But but he would, you know, it was still that kind of he just wouldn't, he didn't want to show weakness. That stigma and yeah. Uh, stigma, yeah. Well, and, especially when when you're a warrior, you're you, you know, you're a man's man, right? You're yeah. supposed to be the strongest, the strong of the strong, right? right? And that's the thing with the stigma is breaking that stigma that seeking help is a weakness. It's not its strength. I mean, when I had when I needed to get better at patrol, and I went to ranger school. You know what I mean? When I needed to learn how to jump out of helicopters, I, you know what I mean? I went and jumped out of helicopters. Yeah. So same thing. Hey, if I needed training and emotional, you know what I mean? Or, and, and mental health. Hey, I go get that training. It's all about training and just, just trying to change the narrative. If you look at, that. if you look at it like that, it doesn't sound that bad. No, right? no. And that's what yeah. we're doing is changing. We're not fighting the stigma. We're changing the narrative. Is the VA listening to you? And they, are they trying to, <laughs> you know what I mean? God, if they, the if VA, they, that's just, a just whole their, other thing. Well, it is and it isn't because it's all very, depends where you live and which VA we're talking about. You're right. So you're right. About. And, but generally that attitude, I think might be a shift for them if they could find a way to be seen that way and not as the medical, you know, oh my God, I need to sick, you know? Hmm. This is kind of a cool fact. I just add, you know, there's a, there's a, speaking of the VA, uh, there's an actor that came in for the, the movie that read that was just amazing. And, uh, and he walked in and, and, you know, he said, look, I, this being part of this thing would, would be so incredibly, I'd be so honored because, you know, my family's military. I was in, in the army. I was telling Tom earlier, he jumped a plane, uh, his chute got tangled, he bounced on the ground, oh, he survived. He's amazing in the movie, but it took him t- it took him a decade to get his benefits, his benefits, and, and, and not Which all is, of them. Which is, we're not doing right by our veterans yeah. with that. Guys, thank you for being here. Again, Instagram, Max Martini LA, website, warriorheart.com. Yeah. Yes, good luck with the film. We're all behind thank it. You guys. We're behind everything you guys are doing. And thank, thank you for so. your service. Thank you.